The charges and counter charges continue to fly today in the ITT affair. Columnist Jack Anderson charged that the White House is orchestrating a campaign against the disclosures made in his column. The main one was a memo written by ITT lobbyist Dita Beard. It linked the settlement of an antitrust case against ITT with an ITT contribution to the Republican convention. But yesterday, Mrs. Beard said suddenly that the memo Anderson published was a forgery. Anderson and his associate, Britt Hume, believe somebody persuaded Mrs. Beard to change her story. Otherwise, they ask, why did ITT destroy its documents? Why didn't someone testify the memo was false? And why did it take Mrs. Beard so long to say it was a hoax? They suggest a White House campaign to submerge the truth. Now, the President of the United States, Mr. Nixon, wants to be reelected. And I say to you, it's as simple as that. The memo that we uh, exposed and the stories that we've written jeopardize his chances to be reelected. First, it was Jerry Ford, the House Republican leader, blasting us. Then it was. Um, Senator Barry Goldwater, the former uh, Republican presidential nominee, blasting us. Now it's uh, Hugh Scott, the Senate Republican leader, introducing this uh, phony uh, affidavit from Mrs. Beard. Uh, it won't stand up, it won't wash. Uh, the public knows better and the senators know better. And I say to you that Senator Hugh Scott, he knows better. He understands better than probably anybody else that this whole campaign has been orchestrated by the White House. That White House aides have been running around talking to the uh, Republican members of the committee. They've been writing speeches and planting them with Republican leaders in the House and the Senate. They've been using Justice Department gum shoes to investigate us and to try to come up with some information. And they have been giving these Republicans phony information. Well, I have no means whatever of knowing whether the original memorandum alleged to have been signed by, uh, initial by Mrs. Beard, or whether Mrs. Beard's affidavit are true or not true, either document. I only know that her lawyer said that she insisted on making an affidavit to show her side of the case and to repudiate the memorandum. Uh, her lawyer then sent it to Washington for me, and I read the memorandum. Anderson says the White House is orchestrating a campaign to cover up the facts. Uh, my own feeling is that the White House was about two weeks late in taking uh, what I would regard as a very active interest in the case. I have no doubt that uh, the Justice Department has been supplying information. The White House may well have been doing so. I myself have asked them to do so. Presidential aides are showing increased concern about the case. They provided material for counterattack speeches and statements by Republican senators. And on one occasion, a White House aide phoned a Washington editor to complain about one of the paper's stories. Plainly, the administration would like the investigation over as soon as possible. Paul Duke, NBC News, Washington. The next step in the investigation is to hear from Mrs. Beard herself. She said she is ready to testify from her hospital bed in Denver, and that may come next week. And today, Jack Anderson said the whole matter could be cleared up simply if Mrs. Beard and his associate, Britt Hume, appear together before the Senate committee and take a lie detector test.